Hey YouTube, uh, it's me here, I'm back, and today is 11-12, and yesterday was 11-11-11, and I even made note of that at 11-11 a.m. and 11 seconds, according to my watch. I know, right? But, that's not what I'm going to be talking about today. What I am going to be talking about today is two things. The first one is something that I probably should have done a while ago, but it never even occurred to me. Uh, a lot of you, or at least some of you, probably remember my, the time at the beginning of the year in January that I posted uh, a video series called Left Anonym Cybernetics for the Masses. And for those of you who don't, I'll put a link down to the first video in the down below bar. Basically, it's a talk given by someone by someone who goes by the pseudonym Left Anonym about something called grinding. And the idea is you basically take things and you implant them in yourself and it gives you some really cool things. Like, for example, you take these tiny little neodymium uh, magnets coated with, uh, I think it's Carlin C. The ones I have are coated with. But you take them, you slice your finger open, and you put the magnet in. And after you adapt to it, it allows you to gain a new sense of electroception. In other words, it lets you feel electromagnetic field. Uh, so, recently, and by recently I mean since January, a bunch of people of this mindset have come together to form a hub called biohack.me, and I'll put a link down in the description box. Biohack.me is basically a hub where we can all discuss projects, figure out what we're going to do next. Uh, currently, we've uh, done one project which is successful, which is the Magnus one. And what we've done is group buys, they're called. And they're basically, we there's a company that you can get these magnets at and when you buy them in bulk they're really cheap we're talking like less than a dollar a magnet so we organize these big group buys so that we can buy them in bulk and we all get our share of magnets currently the main thing that we're working on is uh, we're trying to figure out how electrodes stimulate uh, nerves, and the reason we want to do figure that out is because most of our planned projects involve stimulating nerves with electrodes. The idea is any device which receives an input can be connected to electrodes and can fit underneath your skin can act as a sensory device because the device itself will receive input from whatever it is you're trying to send. It will send the information to electrodes which will uh, which emit electricity to stimulate your nerves. And the off the top of my head, the two main things we're thinking about doing that with is an active EM sensory, which is like the neodymium magnet, but it's hopefully going to be even more sensitive, and B, something called the south paw, the idea being that you can send magnetic north. Um, it's a, based off of something made by the SenseBridge Collective called the North Paw, which does the same thing except 
you, it's a strap that you wear around your ankle. But we're taking it one step further and hopefully we're going to build a version that you can implant inside of your ankle. So uh, the activity on that hub has died down a little bit. So hopefully at least a couple people in my audience will actually find this somewhat appealing and will go over there to help with projects. But the second thing that I want to talk about today is some relatively recent development in DIY synthetic biology. In other words, synthetic biology that you can do like in your garage. Now, if you were to ask me what the single most important process in all of synthetic biology is, it would definitely be PCR. PCR standing for polymerase chain reaction. Most of you probably learned something about it if you ever took a biology class. But to refresh your memory, it's a process which takes a small bit of a DNA sequence that you want and it makes a whole bunch of copies of it. It grows exponentially with the number of cycles you do. Basically, you put um, a specialized PCR tube, which is designed to have the entire tube be heated evenly. You put in it the DNA sequence you care about, um, the four nucleotide bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Then you put in it these things called primers, which the specific primers you're going to want to use depend on the specific DNA sequence you care about. And then you put in it an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Then what the thermocycler does is all it does really is keep heating and cooling it periodically at a rate to favor this reaction. I mean, you could do it hypothetically using, using a pot of boiling water and a pot of ice water, but uh, needless to say that would be incredibly inefficient. So we have these things called thermocyclers to do the job for you. And this is going to be a little difficult to explain without diagrams, but I'm going to try. Basically, the first thing the thermocycler does is it heats it up to almost boiling temperature. You're usually looking at about 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, the DNA double helices will actually unravel into two completely separate single strand. Then, after, I think it leaves it on this for a few minutes, then it cools it down to about 60 degrees Celsius. Well, I say, six, I say it cools it down, but that's still pretty warm. It cools it down, though, to about the temperature that the DNA helices are going to want to go back together again, but they're prevented from doing so because the primers, which are much more numerous at this point than the DNA strands, are going to bind to the beginning and the end of the sequence of the strands that you are interested in. Then it's going to raise the temperature slightly, and the specific temperature depends on the ideal temperature of the specific kind of DNA polymerase you're using. But the DNA polymerase is going to bind to each strand and it's going to work its way down the strand using the four nucleotide bases that you provided it with to assemble the complementary strand and so at the end of the day, let's say you start out with one double helix. At, after this first cycle, you're going to end up with two double helices, although 
the two double helices at this point don't just contain the strand that the sequence that you care about. It takes three more cycles to get two strands with just the sequence that you care about. But after that, you're going downhill because the um, number that you have after each cycle doubles with each new cycle. So after the fifth cycle, you have four. After the sixth cycle, you have eight. After the seventh, you have uh, 16. And you can leave this thing running for an hour or two until you have literally billions of, of the sequence that you want and they make up most of the solution. And that's about the point that you start running out of materials to assemble new strands with. But the problem is these thermocyclers cost literally thousands of dollars. So only labs like university labs or research labs can actually afford these. So this, it's rather impractical to do this DIY, and that's a big setback because, like I said, PCR is probably the most important reaction in synthetic biology. Now, some people have looked at getting used thermocyclers off of eBay, where they can get it for somewhat cheaper. But there are three new attempts to get the price down and make it a more DIY thing. The first one is called Open PCR. And I'll put the link to all three of these uh, in the down below bar. But the first one is called Open PCR. And the idea is they're going to send you the kit, the pieces that you need to make a relatively inexpensive version of a thermocycler. And you build it and you have a thermocycler and they'll send you the parts for only about six hundred dollars which compared to the thousands of dollars for a regular thermocycler that's a significant improvement but the problem is first of all you have to know how to assemble uh, a thermocycler from these parts but six hundred dollars is still fairly expensive can we do better than that? Well, certainly. There's a company called Lava Amp, uh, founded by Joseph Jackson, who I highly respect, by the way. He's trying to build a prototype of a thermocycler called Lava Amp, which, first of all, is portable. It fits in your hand, and it runs on either USB or it can run on four AA batteries. And they're hoping to be able to have something commercially available at first for $400, but hopefully they can get the price down to more like $100, which is a significant improvement even on the open PCR, which was uh, $600. So that's a significant improvement. But we can do even better than that because there's a another DIY synthetic biologist named Russell Durrett who has come up earlier this year with a thermocycler which can be assembled literally from parts that you can buy at Radio Shack and Office Depot. What he does is he takes some PVC tube and he puts in it some circuitry connected to a light bulb and a cooling fan from a laptop. And he, when you put the P PCR tube into the thermocycler, it turns on the light bulb to heat it up and then it turns off the light bulb and it turns on the cooling fan to cool the temperature down. And this version is incredibly inexpensive. It's a completely DIY device. 
you can do this with tools that you can either find around your house or get at suppliers like Office Depot or Radio Shack. So I think the light bulb PCR machine, as it's been called, is the most promising version. So again, links in the description box. And that's all I have for today. I promise my next video is going to be a follow-up to my Q&A video and my blog TV video. So if you haven't asked a question or left a time that you can do blog TV, uh, I'll link to that video and you can click on that video and comment on it with your questions and time. So thank you all for watching. And yeah, this was a pretty technical video, which is why I'm having my smart guy glasses on today. And I don't want to end with Sia because that's so cliche, but I can't think of anything else to end it with. Um, I guess I guess maybe if I ended it with "Go screw yourself," that would be uh, at least creative, but I don't know that it would gain me that much uh, bigger of a reputation. Um, <laughs>